Hello, this is Greg Wilson. I'm a technical evangelist with Adobe, but today I'm actually going to be talking about Amazon Web Services, so this is not a typical Adobe presentation. Um, so first of all, I'm not affiliated with Amazon in any way. This actually is just the results of me uh, doing some experimenting with Amazon. Um, I'm not an expert by any means. I've probably got four or five hours invested in this so far, so don't base any uh, decisions to use ES2 uh, solely on this presentation. Um, and really the intent is just for me to share what I've learned and, and sort of get you over some of the uh, challenges that I, I found when I first got into it and, and hopefully get you excited about it. It's pretty fun. Um, so I had some misperceptions coming into this that I bet a lot of you share. Uh, first of all, I really thought it was pretty expensive and it was only for very large apps that required, you know, large servers, um, you know, being able to scale very suddenly. And uh, even though it's perfect for all of that, uh, it's actually uh, uh, set up for for much smaller uses as well as you're going to see. Um, I had heard that instances that you create when you actually create one of these virtual computers called an instance that they're not preserved after it's shut down. That used to be the case and it's not any, it's not anymore. They're actually, uh, you can choose an instant to be persistent. So when you stop it, all your data is still there. You can start it up later. Uh, I also, for whatever reason, used to think that uh, uh, it required some sort of proprietary OS. I actually thought it was some type of app server in the cloud. Uh, and then I learned that it's actually just virtual hardware. Uh, I can install Windows on it, uh, Linux, you know, pretty much uh, anything you can put on a PC. So Amazon EC2 stands for uh, Elastic Compute Cloud. Um, and it's basically a way to rent virtual computers and peripherals. At least that's my uh, simple way to describe it. You create, launch, and terminate these instances as needed. Uh, and you're buying computer power by the hour. You're buying bandwidth by the gigabyte, and you're buying space by the gigabyte per month. So that's really the three variables that you're playing with. There are a few other things that you have to look out for. Uh, so you want to make sure you understand all the pricing, but that's the three big ones right there. You're buying the computing power, the bandwidth, and the space. Um, and then you can add firewall, load balancer, monitoring, and other things uh, for very inexpensively just by clicking the mouse. Uh, it's pretty cool features. So the value proposition of cloud computing in general, especially with EC2, is you're letting someone else manage the hardware. You're not having to uh, acquire the hardware and maintain it. Uh, so that's a pretty decent uh, proposition. Uh, and you only pay for what you use, so you can rapidly scale up. Maybe you have a, a CIDR application that, that's starting out with just a few users and you want to be able to scale up as it takes off. And, uh, and also important is be able to rapidly scale down. That's sometimes more challenging if you have an application and it goes through, a, a, let's say, a seasonal burst of activity and then the holiday season is over and you need to slow it down, being able to rapidly scale down. So that's a big advantage. Uh, and one other note I wanted to put on here is automatic scaling. Uh, with Amazon, you can actually uh, set it up to uh, dynamically scale your, your application up and down based on real-time demand. I'm not going to cover that in the demo. I'm going to give it a few minutes, but uh, at least want you to be aware of it. Uh, and also, you can just get up and running in, in just a few minutes. Another cool thing about uh, EC2 is that you have four different locations for your uh, for your servers, your virtual servers. They actually have four data centers, uh, one on the west coast of the U.S., east coast of the U.S., one in Europe, and one in Asia Pac. So you could deploy servers to all four of those with just, uh, again, click of the mouse, and uh, users from all over the world can be hitting a server that's you know really more in their region. So that's a nice thing to be aware of. Um, now, everything with EC2 is referred to as an instance. Um, so an instance is really a, a virtual computer, so to speak. Um, and they have a lot of different instance types. I'm going to cover the main ones here. Uh, there's small, large, and a new one called micro. So let's walk through those. So a small, just to hit the highlights, 1.7 gig of memory. Uh, it's got one EC2 compute unit. So it's basically, um, you can consider that just a, a fairly decent size single CPU type of uh, instance. It's a little more complicated than that, but just for the purposes of this, you can consider that just a you know a decent CPU. It's a 32-bit uh, virtual platform. You can run Linux or Windows on it for uh, you know moderate I.O. performance, and roughly the cost is anywhere from 70 to 150 a month. Now, that depends on a lot of factors, uh, amount of I.O., amount of bandwidth, uh, amount of disks that you're adding on. But just to give you sort of a rough ballpark, you're looking at 70 to 150. Uh, moving up a notch, they have a large instance, 7.5 gig of memory. Uh, now it's got four EC2 compute units, so you've got a pretty decent amount of CPU power, a lot more disk space. This is actually a 64-bit virtual platform. 
uh, again, Linux or Windows, uh, really engineered for high I.O. And uh, the cost, uh, 250 to 400 it can go well above that depending on what you configure, but at least just to give you a sense of uh, what it takes. And by the way, Amazon has a calculator, an online calculator, to help you estimate what your cost is going to be. Uh, and then the latest one, and this really uh, uh, got me thinking about it, was this micro instance. Uh, it's literally two cents an hour. Uh, if you do the math, that comes out to about 15 bucks a month. Now, it's, it's smaller, six, 613 meg of memory. Uh, you get up to two compute units, but it's only for short bursts. Typically, it's about half of a compute unit for ongoing stuff. But for things like web servers and stuff with, with uh, light traffic, it's, it's more than enough. It supports either 32-bit or 64-bit Linux or Windows. Um, and again, the cost is somewhere between 15 and 25 a month. Um, so some typical uses of this type of instance. It's, it's a near free way to learn your way around EC2. You can fire up one of these instances and at two cents an hour you can have quite a few hours of fun. Um, using it as a development test server, a low volume app server, DNS server, load balancer, you know, monitoring applications, etc. So now let me give you a quick demo. First thing we're going to do is create a micro instance. Uh, we're going to start it up, we're going to log into it, we're going to set it up as a Linux instance. So we're going to log into it from our uh, uh, command line interface here. I'm going to do a quick install of Apache, and then we're going to actually access that uh, Apache web server uh, using a web browser to confirm that it's up, and then we'll terminate it and call it a day. And, that's, and we'll be spending a total of the minimum one hour, and it'll cost us two cents to, to have that fun. So the management console... Um, we're going to start out by launching an instance. That one looks pretty obvious. I already have one running, but we're going to fire up another one here. So I'm going to say launch an instance. And I'm going to choose an AMI. I could choose one from uh, Amazon. They have their own uh, uh, distribution of Linux here. I think they're repackaging one of the, uh, one of the uh, more common ones. I don't know which one. Uh, and then you see the uh, Fedora distribution of Linux and then various flavors of Windows underneath it. But you're not restricted to just these AMIs, these uh, images that uh, Amazon uh, provides. There's also a gigantic collection of community AMIs. So if we go over to the community side, we can, uh, you know, we can search for a specific AMI number or it's an image number. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the um, elastic.com. And this is a uh, web page that maintains AMIs for Ubuntu Linux. Now, Ubuntu is one that I'm the most familiar with. I've used it the most, so I'm most comfortable with it. So I'm going to pick the 32-bit uh, Ubuntu server. And I've got selected the US East Coast right here. So we're going to fire this one up in the East Coast Data Center. So I'm going to grab that AMI and copy it. So let's go back to our management console. And I'm going to put in that AMI number. And hopefully here in just a couple of seconds, we will uh, get some sort of response. Okay, so now we have our instance and uh, click the select button. And we're going to go through a little bit of configuration here. All right, so here's where we pick our uh, instance type. And let's, uh, let's go with the cheap one, the micro. Again, we're talking... Uh, couple of cents an hour. So we'll pick the micro and go to the next screen. So we're going to leave everything on this screen at the default and we'll move on to the next screen. Just going to leave that as is. And now we're going to create a key pair. So a key pair is a way to uh, authenticate as we log into our server later. I can create a new one, just give it a name and uh, go through a dialog to create and download that file. Again, a key pair is just a file that's going to sit on my drive. You'll see how I use that later. Uh, I'm just going to use one that I uh, use for my other instance, and it's just called Greg Key. Um, so I'll click Continue. And then we're going to get a screen to configure our firewall, and this is done as a security group, so I can create a group and then have multiple instances under it. So I've already got one set up, and I'll, I'll show you the settings for it later. It's called Default, so we'll click continue. So we take a look at everything, we're good to go, and we're going to launch it. So now at this point, a server is being uh, acquired for us and put up in the cloud. Um, so we'll go over to our running instances here, and I have my running one that I've been playing with before, and the one we just created is pending. So we'll give that just a second. I'll hit the refresh button and it should be done by now. It's pretty small. Give it a couple more seconds. Okay, so now our new instance is up and running. 
So we have this one, uh, the last one on the list is the one we just created. So I'm going to select that and we'll look down at the bottom here and we get a little panel of information. Whoops, let's scoot this up and take a look. So here's all the information about our uh, instance and the one key one that we need is this public DNS. So this is the uh, public facing host name. It's mapped to an IP address that's used for this particular instance. So I'm going to copy that. Now let's go log into it. So I'm going to switch over to my terminal window and we're going to SSH and I'm going to pass it in my key file. So minus I Greg key and I'm going to log into the server as Ubuntu. That's the user defined in that particular instance. Now that varies from instance to instance obviously. At the host name we just selected. Hopefully we've done everything right and it's going to drop us right in there. So we'll give it a second. So it's added that new host name. And there we are, we're logged in. So if you look at the information that came up in the uh, message of the day there, we have uh, nearly 15 gig of disk space. Uh, I can do a quick top on this instance and I can see the amount of memory is about 613 uh, mega memory. Uh, it's pretty idle right now. We haven't done anything. So let's uh, let's install a little bit of software. I'm going to use the uh, Ubuntu package tool. So we're going to sudo apt git install Apache 2. So this is going to install uh, the Apache web server. So we have something to uh, look at from the outside world. All right, it's installed. So now let's go pop open another web browser and go to that IP address and there you go. It works. That's the default message uh, from an install of Apache. So in a matter of just a couple of minutes, we launched an inst instance, logged into it, and uh, we see it up and running. So now one thing I passed by earlier that I want to show you is the firewall setup. So remember we chose the default security group. I just want to show you what my default security group looks like. So in this case, when I highlight it, you see all the various services I have enabled. So the only thing I have enabled to this server is uh, port 22, that's for uh, SSH, and port 80 for my uh, web server. So those two ports have been opened up. Now, when you create a security group for the first time, there's nothing opened up. So you'll need to do, uh, you know, open up something to be able to log into it, etc. And then I can add whatever other ports I want here, uh, even custom ports and do port ranges and you know, set it up for a particular source or IP group or whatever. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Let's go back to instances. I'll show you two more things. One, I can take that instance that we just created and I can, uh, you know, right from this uh, dialogue, I can reboot it. Uh, I can stop it. And when I stop it, it's still there for us and we can fire it up later uh, and all of our data is preserved. Or I can terminate it, which gets rid of it forever. And, uh, you know, we're no longer charged for it when the next hour rolls around. Uh, and then one other thing is the IP address. Remember, we use this IP address down at the bottom, but if we stop this instance uh, and restart it later, it's going to get assigned a different IP address. They don't persist that IP address, so the way around that is an Elastic IP. So we go to Elastic IP, and I've already got one set up for my other instance, so we'll create a, uh, a new IP address. So now I've got a new IP address of uh, you know 174 or whatever, and I can associate that to my other instance. And there's the other instance. Click associate, and now that IP address belongs to that new instance we just set up. Now later, if I stop that, and maybe I uh, terminate it and I start up a new instance and maybe a larger instance this time, I can reassign this same IP address to that new instance and hence the name Elastic IP because I can uh, basically bounce it around from one uh, server to the other. So that's it in a nutshell. Obviously there's a lot more I could show you but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown. I've got a few links on the page here. Um, also at the, uh, the top link is really the only one you need. It's gregsramlings.com slash ec2 or if you came to this from my blog you've already seen these links but that has all the links below. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be doing some more things on EC2 later as I learn more. I find this a lot of fun. Hopefully you will, too. Uh, you can follow up on my blog, gregsramlinks.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, uh, Gregory Wilson. So appreciate you uh, listening, and uh, have a great one. Thanks.